I used to run Gibson sandblasting, me and my dad, and several workers. And my dad started taking me to work with him when I was probably five years old, whenever he could. And uh, he had his own business and we were doing houses and brick buildings and brick houses. And we worked occasionally on a water tower, um, inside tanks, inside buildings. Um, so we were exposed to the silica. You know, we did hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of houses, brick buildings. You can go down Main Street in Oshkosh, in one block I can go, we did that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, right down the blocks, you know. And when you do brick, yellow brick, just fog, the, the brick dust disintegrating, just fog pouring through the air. Abrasives, be it sand, steel grit, aluminum oxide, um, crushed walnut shells, glass beads, it can be shot grit, all kinds of different stuff. And it's dropped into a high pressure air stream and goes through a hose to a nozzle um, and then gets shot at a surface, a substrate, to abrasively remove the coating or the rust or whatever you're trying to remove off it. Yes, we did use face masks, double strap masks, almost all the time. We use air-fed hoods, um, not in the beginning, but um, when we were first working, but we did use them and filtered breathing air and oilless air compressors for the breathing air. Um, there were warnings on if you bought bag sand, there's warnings on every bag um, telling about the hazards of breathing the dust and, and a picture of, you know, with a circle with a line through it about having dust go into your lungs. Well, even though I was very good on protecting myself, it's your clothes are covered with it, you're covered with it. You know, you can take your mask off at the end of the day when you're riding home in your vehicle, but you're, it's all on your clothes and it's, it's coming off your clothes all the time. It's, it's all around you, everything's covered with the dust. I went to a doctor in um, a small city around here and this was 20, probably 30 years, 30, 30 years ago now at least. And uh, I had never met this doctor before in my life. And uh, I, he did a chest x-ray on me. I told him what kind of work and everything I did and how I wasn't able to sleep for like five days straight because I couldn't breathe. And he did a chest x-ray and came back in the room with tears in his eyes for me. And he had never met me before in my life. He didn't know me at all. And he was such a compassionate person. Well, I remember times when for 15 years straight, every breath I took was, was lacking satisfactory oxygen where, you know, all night long you're, you're trying to sleep and it's like you're, there's not enough oxygen in the air and you can hardly sleep. Just walking out to your mailbox and back in the winter time if there's a little bit of snow or even sometimes in the summer, just walking to your mailbox right in front of your place, you gotta stop halfway. Yeah, it's not, not nice. The, this dust, free silica, the fog, the fine particulate that's so fine it floats in the air like a cloud on the ground. It gets in your lungs and then your, your lungs grow skin around these particles and encapsulate it. And then that, the, what is the scylla? The, the hairs inside your lungs. But um, those get destroyed and those are the things that catch the oxygen molecules off the air and take them into your body. And as them get destroyed, you get less and less oxygen. Your lungs turn into leather and your lung capacity, every time you take a breath and like blow up a balloon, you know, the more lung damage you got, the less air volume you have.
Well, I could have been wearing masks uh, more and sooner. Um, I could have went to oilless um, breathing air sooner. You know, if a person, hindsight, if you could, um, if I would, could have seen what it would have done to me and my dad and other people, um, if I could have seen the end of the game in the beginning, I would have certainly taken the precautions, you know. Until you start feeling the effects of the injury, and still you, until you see and, and are affected by the results and know that that's why it's happening, who's gonna, who's gonna take any precautions? If anybody cares about themselves, you're, you're gonna have to um, overcome the being laughed at maybe around by fellow employees and stuff by, for wearing that mask. Some things it's long term. It might be 30 years later where you're gonna be in way worse shape than you thought you would be in. You're a young whippersnapper now jumping around doing whatever you, you know, like that. Well, how's that song go? And in my case, I'm not even as good once as I ever was.